hydrogen can form both H plus ions and H minus ions. Which statement about these two ions is correct? H plus ion has no electrons in its first shell. Ah, that's completely true. H plus ions is like hydrogen, it's just a proton with like an electron around it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay? And when you, you know, take the electron away, whoa, 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 whoa. It's just a proton. H plus ions are just protons. Imagine that. These are just flying protons, right? And H plus ion has more protons than an H minus. Hmm. H minus ion has one more electron than an H plus ion. One more electron. Actually, two more electrons because one more electron would just make it hydrogen atom. H minus ions is formed when hydrogen atom gains an electron. So we're happy with A. Which pair of substances act as reducing agents in the blast furnace? Carbon and oxygen. Um, no, not really. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide? No. Carbon monoxide, yes. Carbon dioxide, no. But carbon can react with iron oxide and carbon monoxide can act, react with iron oxide to produce iron, which is a reduction reaction, reducing reaction. So the correct answer is in using a pen is C, right? And why not A? I think I skipped over this. Oxygen would be an oxidizing agent. Even the carbon's there, right? And oxygen back again, right? The correct answer is C. The equation below shows exothermic reaction. Which statement about exothermic reaction is not correct? Let's, uh, I anticipate hearing about bonds breaking minus bonds forming, right? Magnesium chloride is soluble in water. Okay, it says aqueous in the name. It says aqueous. So that's correct. Magnesium is above hydrogen in the reactivity series. That's also true. It's actually the third or fourth one, right? Fourth in our reactivity ser series. One mole of magnesium produces one mole of hydrogen gas. That's also true, one to one. The total energy of this product is greater than that of the reactants. If we try to make an energy profile for an exothermic reaction, these are my reactants, this is my product, and I realize that it's losing energy, so it's negative delta G, right? The arrow is pointing downwards, delta H, delta G, right? So, it's actually the products are at a lower energy level than the reactants. So the total energy of the products is greater. No, it's actually lower, less, lesser, right? The correct answer is, or the incorrect answer is D. In the contact process for making sulfuric acid, one step involves the oxidation of sulfur dioxide as shown below. Forward reaction is exo. Another way of seeing this is heat is produced like that. Let's make it cleaner. Heat is produced, right? Which change would increase the amount of sulfur trioxide produced at equilibrium? Increasing the temperature will favor the side where less heat is produced. Uh, so that would be the opposite, right? So I'll just like the left hand side would be favored. Decreasing the, okay, that works. Decreasing the pressure will favor the side with more moles of gas. So there are more moles on this side, there are three, because two and one, and there are two over here. So decreasing pressure increases, uh, favors the side with, the, with more moles of gas. Adding a catalyst does not do anything. So like it increases the rate of reaction, but both backward and forward rate, so it kind of cancels out. So, the correct answer is then 
B will produce more sulfur trioxide equ equilibrium. A statement about conduction of electricity is correct. Electricity conducted in aqueous solution by electrons, no by ions. Electricity is conducted in a metal wire by electrons. Electricity is conducted in a molten electrolyte by ions. Electricity is conducted in an acid solution by, thank you, ions. Answer is D. From your knowledge of the manufacture of both aluminum and iron, what is the order of chemical reactivity of aluminum, carbon, iron towards oxygen? Towards oxygen? Okay. Hmm. What, what, what does it mean towards oxygen? I guess just general reactivity, right? If it's more reactive, it's going to be more reactive towards oxygen. So, uh, aluminum, carbon can, carbon can take the oxygen from iron and leave iron, right? So it's iron and I guess carbon is more reactive because that's what they fight for. But if you heat aluminum oxide with carbon and iron, right, nothing happens because aluminum oxide is so attached to the oxygen, it doesn't want to give it away. So the king is aluminum in terms of aluminium in terms of reactivity. Undisputed. Was it meant to be gems? So we have aluminum as the most reactive, followed by carbon, then iron. The answer is A. The molar heat of combustion, the heat given out when one mole of alcohol is completely burned, of a number of alcohol is given below. How many carbon and hydrogen atoms would there be in an alcohol? that has a molar heat of combustion of 3900. Hmm. So I think we just divide. So it's almost increasing by a table of seven, right? Like decreasingly. So what's the table of seven? Seven times one is seven, 14, 21, uh, 28, right? Uh, so if I continue with this, 28, What's what's the what's the table? <laughs> thirty-five, and uh, it's gonna be thirty-five. And let's just go to forty-two. Let's see. Okay, so I think it can be more than thirty-five, right? Because these values are following the table of seven. Each carbon added just adds about seven hundred-ish energy to it, six hundred to seven hundred energy, right? it becomes more, you know, um, gives out more energy, right? So at 35, it's going to probably give out uh, probably, you know, very close to, I don't know, 3,300, something like that, you know, because it's always less. Take a look. This is the only one that's larger. Every other value is less. But at 4,200, if there was an alcohol that would give out 3,900, it would be this one, the second one after the 2641. Let's just highlight this with the green and let's count the number of carbons. This is for four carbons, this is for five carbons, this is for six carbons. Think number of carbon atoms has to be six. And what's the general formula going on over here? Uh, four has 10. It's C and H two N plus one O H, right? And that's the general formula. If C is six, it's gonna be six H thirteen O H. So fourteen. Our correct answer is D. A student investigates the reaction of different vegetable oils with hydrogen. A 100 centimeter cube of hydrogen was passed through one gram sample of vegetable oils containing a suitable catalyst. So they're going under, they're undergoing hydrogenation, right? They're being reduced. The volume of hydrogen remaining after each reaction was recorded. So 
P didn't react at all, whereas everyone else did. And S was like, hungry boy, right? Hungry hippo. Which vegetable oils are unsaturated? So unsaturated hydrocarbons that have a carbon-carbon double bond and they will react with the hydrogen. So the total volume of hydrogen would decrease. So think Q, R, and S. Q, R, and S are all vegetable oils that are unsaturated. So Q, R, and S, the correct answer is C. Which of the following reagents could be used to distinguish between dilute nitric acid and dilute hydrochloric acid? Um, let's take a closer look at nitric acid. HNO3 and we have HCl, right? Aqueous barium chloride. What would that do? Absolutely nothing, I think. But sulfuric acid, the barium might would have worked. Copper carbonate would probably do very little as well. It'll react with both copper nitrate and copper chloride will be formed. Silver nitrate will test for the chloride ion. Bingo! This will test for the chloride ion and form a white precipitate and will test and will let us know if it's um, hydrochloric acid or not. No reaction would mean it's just nothing. Uh, nitric acid. Sodium hydroxide will again react with both acids. So that's our correct answer is C. Which substance is a covalent compound? So it shouldn't conduct electricity at all. Does not conduct as a solid. Does not conduct. I think we're done. Right? Covalent compounds will not. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it won't. I was thinking of diamond, but that's a giant covalent, not this. So B is our answer. The diagram shows electrolysis of sodium chloride and molten sodium chloride. Which substance has both positive ions and mobile electrons? Neither of them would have mobile electrons. Oh, copper wire. Okay, aqueous sodium chloride would have free ions. Ions. Copper wire would have electrons. Molten sodium chloride would have ions only. And this would be electrons only. What kind of a question is this? Positive ions. Oh, I see. Positive ions. Positive ions. The stupid, stupid, stupid question. Okay, positive ions. So metals have positive ions with a sea of electrons around them. So yeah, okay. Copper wire. The, what a stupid question. I can't even. Which substance does not produce copper sulfate when added to sulfuric acid? Copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series and will not react with acids. So you can have copper canisters containing the sulfuric acid, so they don't react. Carbonates readily react with um, acids. This is a base which will readily react with an acid. This is a basic oxide, metal oxide, which will readily react with an acid. So these will all react. The table shows the solubility of some salts of metal Y in cold water. Insoluble, soluble, insoluble. What is metal Y? So all carbonates are insoluble except group 1K. Sodium, potassium, and I think there was one more. So sodium's out. Uh, chlorides. All chlorides are soluble except silver. Sulfate is insoluble. So barium is actually insoluble. Lead and magnesium sulfate are soluble. The correct answer is A. To reduce atmospheric pollution, the waste gases from a coal-burning power station are passed through powdered calcium carbonate. Which waste gas will not be removed by the powdered calcium carbonate? Carbon monoxide is very likely the case. Nitrogen dioxide is acidic, which will be removed. 
phosphoric oxide is not in the syllabus but it's acidic sulfur dioxide this is what it's used for is also acidic so carbon monoxide is actually not acidic dioxide on the other hand is and will be removed a polymer X was hydrolyzed and the two products were shown so you have a you know what can be used it was a condensation polymer yeah right it was condensed together because you know poly and amide linkage was formed H2O was given out so it falls under condensation it was a starch no it wouldn't have an amine in it so this is out it was made by addition polymerization no that would require carbon carbon double bonds it was terylene terylene is a polyester there's no alcohols here so a is our answer